and uh, really pleased with uh, the way we push through things today. Um, we had, uh, you know, I had, want to be smart. Kendall had a little ankle ankle sprain, so I decided just to hold him out today. He should be back, I think, full go tomorrow. Treatments are good. Um, he says he's feeling pretty good. I probably could have had him go, but one of the error on the the, the safe side. Um, and then uh, a couple other guys got banged up a little bit, but uh, we'll see how they come out of the uh, the treatments here tonight. Um, other than that, any questions you might have? Yeah. Danny. Nice, good. How are you? Doing well. As far as what you've taken away so far, I know I, you didn't have pads in the beginning and you worked your way into them, but what, what are the big things that you've been able to take away from the group? Well, I think a lot of the big guys inside are learning how to play the game. Um, you know, it's a, it's a different game than high school for some of these guys that haven't played a lot of football with big guy, with guys their size across from them. It's simple as that. And, you know, they're getting 600 pounds of double team on them, you know, Kate and Samuels and Jalen and, and those Jalen Harvey and those guys. So it's a different feeling now. You know, in high school they could stand up and throw a guy down and go make a play. Now they got two big old dogs that might be 22 years old doubling them, and it's a new world. So taking, uh, you know, what I, what I take away is probably the biggest learning curve as we're playing physical is uh, those guys learning how important it is to play with technique and being mentally strong and that's that's how we define toughness is it's not the physicality of knocking someone over it's more how do you deal with getting knocked and fighting a good fight to come back the next play and that's what they're learning and and uh it's you know it's exciting time for me watching those kids because i see growth potential every single day and it's going to be ups and downs but you know that's what makes them when they learn how to get through that Yep. Normal. Sal? Coach, just your thoughts on tomorrow and get the fans getting the Can't wait. Fan Fest tomorrow. Um, we're going to lighten the load on the kids in the morning. We have a true two a day. Um, you know, instead of going almost two hours, we'll probably go about an hour, an hour and a half uh, in the morning and then come back and uh, we'll start out on our practice fields and then. Uh, as you know, as the fans get in, we'll we'll meet them over at the soccer facility, and when we turn the corner, we'll split sides up, and we're gonna have some good scrimmage work tomorrow. So uh, should be fun, and and I uh, look forward to seeing seeing some of the fans, and especially some of the little ones. You know, it's always neat for me and the kid and the players to see those kids from the community come out. Um, looking forward to it. Fan Fest was great last year. The weather's gonna be perfect. Um, great way to kind of kick off the season uh, to those true diehard fans here in town and uh, just look forward to seeing them. Yeah, J Joey has a shoulder. Um, we're going to have to see how he responds to uh, his rehab. It's probably going to be a couple weeks before he gets back. Ryan, um, he's got a he's got a little thing in his arm that uh, you know, we're hoping it's going to be maybe two or three days, maybe sooner, maybe later. We've seen guys play with it, uh, so it's going to be pain threshold and his ability to, you know, work through the training room and get back. Like a thing. I don't want to go into the details of it. His arm hurts. We're going to try to get him healthy. Hi, uh, can you go uh, talking about Fan Fest again? Can you go more the importance of getting in front of the community uh, with Fan Fest and kind of what it not only does for the fans but for the players as well? Well, to me, you know, I think um, people of Syracuse and Central New York are um, enjoying their summer, but they know right around the corner is a kickoff to, you know, our 2014 campaign. And this is like a preview for them to come out and see the kids and take a look at some of the new kids that are running around. Um, you know, they read about them in recruiting. They were excited to see some of these guys get in. At the end of the scrimmage, we're going to let the young guys play a lot of reps and um, it's just a chance to kind of reintroduce our team and, and, and reintroduce uh, some of those kids that uh, they've been reading about uh, to the fans. And it's a chance for them to come out and see their team. And you know how I always talk about it. It is. It's Syracuse. It's our team. The Central New York area. It's their team. I want them to really embrace it and uh, enjoy having a college football team in their town uh, playing at the highest level. And um, for me, it's more... It's more um, you know, an introduction to the 2014 season. Zach. Since you took over, Coach, you've put a lot of emphasis on involving the fans in the program. Is, going to the second year now, how do you think the perception of the program has changed in the community? 
I don't know. I just know everybody uh, is extremely supportive when I walk. You know, I walk, you know, I like to do simple things. You know, Missy and I will go on a date and end up at TJ Maxx. You know, looking for a hat for seven ninety nine. And I like bumping into the people and, and just uh, hearing their excitement for the the community. You know, for the team. Um, I mean, it's pretty simple for me. You know, you have you have a ACC football team in your town opportunity to. Uh, enjoy being part of the college and the excitement that that college football brings to your community and I just want to make sure the fans always know that it is their team and we talk a lot about it in our in our auditorium with our team about how you know we don't want to let them down you know it killed me last year we had a you know we had a great crowd for that Clemson game and they're they were a damn good team as we all know and it killed me that we didn't do a better job uh, playing that game for our, our fans and it killed our kids and I said you know uh, it's never going to be as, as pretty as we want it to be early on but every season and every game every week we have an opportunity to do do better for you guys you know for your your fans and uh, it's as simple as that you know it's their team I want them to embrace it and, and I know our kids do and uh, when they come out in this environment and it's a little bit laid back because we have 20, you know, 20 days before we have to kick it off, um, it's a chance to go out there, practice hard, and then take a second, talk to the fans a little bit and get around them. And um, that's what college football is all about. And uh, we just look, you know, we look forward to, uh, you know, meeting up with some folks tomorrow afternoon. Should be, should be a great day. No, nah, I don't really. You know, I think I think once you get on the on the field, you 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 have to you know eliminate all distractions, and um, it's a good opportunity to see the maturity level of some players. Um, you know, some kids when they first get here, they they have rabbit ears and they hear everything and they're looking up and you know, those people over there. I remember that little kid or hey, there's that pretty girl. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They got to learn how to block those things out, control the controllables, focus in on what's important find a, uh, a happy medium to their mindset when they go out there, play with some balance. You know, the, you don't want to be too tight. You don't want to be too loose. We talk a lot about finding that happy middle ground and focusing in on uh, the job at hand. Once they get between those white lines, um, you know, I think it's, you know, I think it's just one play at a time. But with that being said, they'll have a little more juice because they know there's fans out there watching them too. And uh, that's fun. You know, and that's what that's what it's all about. Uh, we saw some of the younger skill position players run a little bit with the ones today on offense. Steve Ishmael, Ben Lewis, Devontae. Is that just trying to mix guys up? Or? Uh, just competition. You know, if a guy has a better day than another guy uh, on a on a Tuesday than Wednesday, he's going to get more reps, and uh, that's that that's that competition that you want and making sure you have kids that you know can scare the devil out of the guys that uh, are the uh, starters. In the depth chart that doesn't mean anything. The only depth chart that counts is the one when we kick off against Villanova. And, uh, you know, open competition is the best way to get better. And uh, that's kind of the way we approach it. Any of those guys in yeah, Ishmael's doing a good job. I think Ben Lewis has a high work ethic, and uh, I've liked the way he's worked at it. Um, Ashton had a really good day uh, yesterday. And um, let me see, on the defensive side, uh, Corey Winfield's starting to do some things. Um, you know, we just we just moved him over to corner. We're trying to uh, force feed him the information and the teaching. Uh, you know, he's got a lot of work to do mentally to figure it all out. But uh, but he's done some nice things. I think it comes easy to him, and I'm interested to see how he progresses these next few days. And he was running up in there and hitting people today too, and and that was really good to see. Um, you know, uh, Jamal Cussis, he's a little ways away, uh, but I like the way he works at it. Um, who else we got young guys? Irvin Phillips yesterday. We had some uh, scrimmage tempo plays. I think I might have mentioned it yesterday. And he uh, he broke off two nice runs. So I think uh, Devontae and George are looking at this over their shoulder saying, ooh, this is interesting. So competition's the greatest thing. You know, when we first got here, there weren't too many guys pushing the guys in front of them. And uh, now I think that's starting to change a little bit. Uh, the quarterback situation. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this all all pans out here in the next in the next week or so. I'd like to come out of Fort Drum feeling strong about what our two deep starting to look at, knowing that it's not solidified, but hopefully it can be, you know, kind of narrowed down a little bit. So I think um, 
you know, I told the kids uh, in the meeting today, when we get to Saturday evening, um, it would be like cut day, elimination day in the NFL, and we won't cut anybody. But we will make decisions as to who's in the too deep a little bit. Uh, we will try to put pressure on them to see how they play under pressure. Right, Darius? To see how they play under pressure. And um, I'm looking forward to that. So I'm trying to put a little pressure on them right now. And I've told them, you know, let's see what you can do mentally to get yourself right to put a, put a good performance together on Saturday afternoon. And then Saturday night, you'll be able to take a look at where you are and where you aren't and go to work to either keep your job or regain some uh, uh, momentum to try to take someone's job. And that's kind of where we're at, you know, as we work uh, these next two practices. Yeah. It hasn't crossed my mind, so <laughs> don't give him any ideas. Uh, no, I haven't. I really haven't thought about it. <laughs> And that youth includes, um, you know, every kid that hasn't played on the field. You know how I am. Like, I've always talked about, um, you know, maybe someone gets their first start in their in their junior year. It's their freshman start. It's their first, you know what I mean? So, Wayne Williams. I was going to ask if, if the, you were giving him a pick-me-up and we saw him kind of get removed from a drill earlier. Is he Just challenging him to continue to leap over the next hurdle, basically. Um you know, Wayne's got a little elbow thing that's that's sore, and, you know, he's done a nice job cutting weight. He's done a nice job learning how to deal with so much more structure in his life. Um, he's done a nice job, you know, fighting to compete for more plays in a practice. Now he's at a point where he's really never had any type of injuries, and, you know, when you get banged up, you're hurting, but you're not injured, so that's the next hurdle. He's getting ready to jump, so... We're talking about that, and uh, I'm telling him to trust Coach Douse because I've seen him do it. I told him the story about Chandler Jones when uh, we were uh, he had an injury a couple years back there, and uh, at one point they were telling him uh, that he might be done for the season. And a couple days later, we get another opinion. They say, "No, you'll be fine," and he ends up playing one of his best games in his career against West Virginia when we beat him in uh, in the Loud House and. Uh, he had you know, three or four sacks, knocked the hell out of Geno, changed the game for us on a three-down three rush where they had five guys blocking, and he split a double team. And, you know, 10 days prior or whatever it was, they were telling him maybe his season's over. And so I was challenging uh, Wayne and, and a couple other guys to learn what the new normal is and learn how to play with uh, pain and uh, be tough. And that's that, that really exemplifies what we want to be about, being a hard-nosed team and understanding what that really means. It's not just some word that people, you know, talk about. It's it's embracing uh, the pain to some degree because football is it's, it's a painful sport sometimes. And when you come out the back end of it, you learn a lot about yourself. And those are life lessons you take with you uh, far, you know, far beyond your football, you know, because you're going to have pain in life. And we talk about that a lot. The pain in your body is going to be a uh, microcosm of some of the hurdles you got to jump later in life. And uh, so that, that was the talk we were having when we were uh, getting deep, walking down the cracks in the sidewalk there today. Thanks, Coach.